Welcome to today's 28th episode of SpaceX in the News. Today we have four things to talk about, only four, but these four things are really exciting. They're just jam-packed full of interesting information I can't wait to share with you. We're going to start things off with Starlink, why it hasn't flown yet, but some really cool details that weren't made available to the public until recently. Then we're going to move on to Starship and talk about its new home away from home, and then we'll transfer back to the original home, Boca Chica, Texas, and talk about Star Hopper. I cannot wait to talk to you about this. Then we'll round this video up discussing some new details between NASA and SpaceX and the future to the moon by 2024. Let's get started. So about a week ago, the Falcon 9 booster that's supposed to take the first 60 Starlink satellites in orbit around the Earth rolled out to the launch pad for its static fire. And the interesting thing about this is that they static fired this Falcon 9 booster with all 60 Starlink satellites on board. Now this is a big deal because they haven't done something like this since the 2016 catastrophe of Amos 6, when the Falcon 9 rocket blew up on the launch pad during fueling and the entire payload on board was lost. But it makes sense for SpaceX to do this during the Starlink mission because Starlink is SpaceX tech. There are no customers on board to severely disappoint, if you will. And refueling a rocket on the launch pad with the payload on board is probably something that SpaceX wants to get back into the habit of doing because they have Crew Dragon coming up in the very near future when they're going to do that with actual people sitting on the rocket. You know, build some confidence in the public and NASA as well. Best to get it back down now with confidence before we start putting people back on board. Capiche? But still, this was a really big gamble. I mean, check out Elon's tweet of these Starlink satellites. It took some mega Tetra skills to get all those in there. We're talking less than a couple of inches between the fairing interior and the payload itself. And of course, Elon made sure to tweet out his confidence in the mission, saying much will likely go wrong on the first mission. Also, six more launches of 60 sats are needed for minor coverage, 12 for moderate. And of course, he's referring to the overall mission of these satellites to create a giant constellation of satellites around the Earth, approximately 12,000 of them, so that everybody can have fast internet. But let's get really specific with the details and take a look at SpaceX's statement on the mission. Quote, with a high flat panel design featuring multiple high throughput antennas and a single solar array, each Starlink satellite weighs approximately 227 kilograms, allowing SpaceX to maximize mass production and take full advantage of Falcon 9's launch capabilities. To adjust position on orbit, maintain intended altitude, and deorbit, Starlink satellites feature hull thrusters powered by Krypton. Designed and built upon the heritage of Dragon, each spacecraft is equipped with a Star Tracker navigation system that allows SpaceX to point the satellites with precision. Importantly, Starlink satellites are capable of tracking on-orbit debris and autonomously avoiding collisions. Additionally, 95% of all components of this design will quickly burn up in Earth's atmosphere at the end of each satellite's life cycle exceeding all current safety standards, with future iterative designs moving to complete disintegration. All right, that's a lot of information, so let's quickly summarize. This will be the heaviest payload that SpaceX has ever put up into space. We're talking about 40,000 pounds. Elon tweeted that if all goes well, each launch of 60 satellites will generate more power than the space station and deliver one terabit of bandwidth to Earth. That's right, he said each launch. Now keep in mind, this is just the first launch of <laughs> many down the road, and these first 60 satellites aren't even everything Starlink is supposed to be. They are workable prototypes, if you will. If we're talking in terms of hardware, you could say they're not totally stacked. And speaking of stacked, guess how the rocket's gonna deploy all the satellites? Like a stack of playing cards. These satellites are just, they're just in there. They're not attached to any decoupler kind of mechanism in this payload bay. So the way that they plan on releasing them is by rotating the payload with the Falcon 9 second stage. And as they rotate it, that centripetal force will push all the satellites outward. So SpaceX said that when these satellites deploy, there's a chance that they might bump into each other, but it's okay because they had that in mind when they designed them. Maybe they can use the Hall effect thrusters to kind of navigate them away from each other, which I'm sure is what they plan on doing. And the most likely reason SpaceX decided to go with the Krypton based Hall thrusters instead of the Xenon is because while Xenon is more efficient, they are way more expensive as well. And if you don't know what a Hall effect thruster is, it's just an ion engine accelerated by an electric field. Now, if you're the type of guy that's just like, come on, Kevin, get down to the brass tacks. How fast a bandwidth are these satellites gonna put out? Well, apparently they're gonna have a combined bandwidth of one terabit per second or 125 gigabytes a second, averaging around 17 gigabytes per satellite. Now, the Falcon 9 booster that's supposed to lift these things off the pad has flown twice before. This is supposed to be its third launch. It's supposed to attempt the landing on the drone ship, of course, I still love you, but it won't be as close to shore as the previous mission. A heavier payload, of course, means it's going to really be pushing it out there. So it's gonna land on the drone ship really far away. In fact, that really far away is 385 miles downrange, which means the booster's going further horizontally than the satellites are going vertically. Now, if you were paying attention and tried to watch the launch on the 15th, you probably noticed that 
the rocket didn't go anywhere. And that's just because there are unpleasant high level winds. So SpaceX scrubbed and pushed it another 24 hours, but then scrubbed the launch again just seconds into their live webcast. And that's just because SpaceX wanted to double check and triple check all the software going on with these satellites. So they'll be trying it again next week. And of course, we'll be there to try as well. And during my coverage of their live webcast, I'll be giving away a Lego Saturn V rocket. So if you tune in and watch the launch with me, there's a chance you could win this thing. But one last thing about the Starlink mission is that Elon Musk said that it was a way to generate revenue to develop more advanced rockets and spaceships. He said Starlink is a key component for establishing a presence on the moon and Mars. So really there's more at stake here than just fast internet. And speaking of Starship, let's transition there now. Although it may not seem like it, things are starting to really ramp up with the development of Starship. I'm sorry, starships. This week, a second starship vehicle was spotted being constructed in Florida. But that's not new news to you and I, because I briefly discussed this a few times back in early February, and I talked about exactly what was coming. At the time, Elon Musk was also planning on having a second starship engineering team positioned at the Cape. The idea that these two teams would compete against each other to see who could build the first starship. Now, it would be a friendly competition. Each team would communicate with each other about problems they experienced as to help the other team out. The ultimate idea being that things would move along twice as fast. But just the other day, Elon did reiterate this to the public to let them know, yes, two starships are now being built and it's gonna be a friendly competition between both sides to really get the best of both worlds and make things progress even faster. Hey, the guy really wants to go to Mars to get more candy bars. But check it out, this site was just discovered randomly by you know an active SpaceX community member. And you can see how far along they are. You can tell they've been at it for at least several weeks. We've got several sections of paneling already welded together, and soon they'll be stacked on top of each other, just like they're doing down in Boca Chica, Texas right now. Now this build site is approximately 15 to 20 miles from the launch site in Cape Canaveral. So how SpaceX plans on transporting the Starship to the launch pad, uh, no one really knows. What we do know is that if they plan on doing it like they did Starhopper down in Boca Chica, is gonna be kind of a pain, albeit not impossible though. We will find out eventually though, because it was just leaked that SpaceX is considering an SSTO Starship launch from Pad 39A. SSTO stands for Single Stage to Orbit. And of course, my channel will keep a really close eye on the progress going on down there in Cocoa, Florida, and I'll be sure to fill you in as needed. Okay, so we got Starship in Florida and we got Starship in Boca Chica, but in Boca Chica, we also have Star Hopper. Let's talk about that. So Regan Beck, who happens to be a subscriber of this channel, hi Regan also happens to be a favorite of Elon's to respond to on Twitter. Reagan lives near SpaceX's site down there where they test rocket engines and asked Elon when they can expect Raptor SN4 to arrive, but shocked everyone when he said that SN4 is done now and Hawthorne is working on SN5, but Focus is ramping the build rate of SN6 through SN10. Okay, wow, we didn't know what was going on in Florida with Starship. Okay, we didn't know that was there. And now we're finding out that, oh yeah, SpaceX just happens to be progressing at rapid speed on the Raptor development. Good for you, SpaceX. Keep us in the dark. I thought you loved us. Just kidding. We are all grateful for the transparency that Elon and SpaceX gives us. If you're confused by what this tweet here means, let me just break it down for you really quick. This means that the engine that's going to go on Starhopper, which is the prototype for Starship that's supposed to take man to Mars and to the moon here in the next half decade, is way further along than any of us thought. And these first few engines that they've already done and tested should be arriving at Boca Chica for their first hop flights here any day now. In fact, a local county judge for Cameron County down there in Brownsville and Boca Chica just released a statement a few days ago that SpaceX will begin testing again on May 28th. Well, there it is, guys. We finally have a date. Now, it's not set in stone that this is when it's actually going to happen, but at least we know in late May, SpaceX is once again going to strap those engines on the Starhopper and lift off. But this time, Starhopper's not supposed to be tethered to the launch pad. We're about to witness this big fella take off the pad and possibly get to a height of about 20 meters. And it only goes higher from there. And to help control Starhopper stay upright while it's doing these hover tests, last week we mentioned that SpaceX engineers at Boca Chica were recently seen hooking up ACS thrusters. Guys, I cannot stress enough how excited I am for this. <laughs> this summer is going to be amazing. We're gonna have so much to cover, so much to do all across the SpaceX spectrum. Get amped! I demand it. But let's finish this video out with some talk about the not so distant future. As I'm sure you are all well aware, NASA has a plan to get people back to the moon by 2024. And they just tapped 11 American companies to help make this happen. NASA just received 1.6 billion in revenue from the White House and provided a total of 45.5 million to 11 different space companies that include SpaceX, Blue Origin, and of course, Boeing and Lockheed Martin for six months of their time to research and perhaps build rough prototypes of vehicles to get us back on the moon. SpaceX specifically is one of the companies that will be tasked with proposing a lunar lander. Here's a list of all 11 of those awardees and the tasks they've been assigned to complete by NASA. Well, that's all I have for you guys in this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, then prove it. Hit that like button. Also, subscribe.
be part of the family. We're nice here. One of us. One of us. God bless you guys and Godspeed. Do you have too much money, not know what to do with it? Can I just say, you should give it to me. And in return, I will gift you exclusive access to more cloud looking content. How does that exactly work, you might not be asking? Well, it's easy. You just check out the description below, you know, down there below the video, and you'll see a link to my Patreon account. Click it and it'll take you right to my Patreon page where you can see all the different memberships that you can join under. Read the rewards for each and choose the one that's best for your licking. I mean liking. It's a great way for us to grow this channel by allowing us to create better content more often. So give it a try and be part of the adventure. And I'll see you over there.